So um, the purpose of today's show is we're going to do, Randy doesn't know this, but we're going to do an intervention. Um, Randy, you've been buying a lot of <laughs> the rumor. I don't want to hear this. I'm leaving. No. You don't understand. You don't understand me. You don't understand my needs. <laughs> no, Randy, so, no. Randy FaceTimed me earlier and he said, uh, hey, man, I, I got I got kind of an addictive personality and I've, I've been maybe buying a couple of things over the past couple of days. And he showed me this beautiful silver face, realistic old school amplifier receiver amplifier. And I was like, continue <laughs> onward, continue. <laughs> this is the kind of addiction that we want to see. We want to, <laughs> That's I said he's right. going to be one of those like old curmudgy audiophiles that has just like nothing but old school silver face amps and receivers throughout his home. He's going to hoard them all. Yeah. Well, I can see it happening because number one, they're they, awesome. They sound actually really good. And yeah. like I did nothing to the, my pioneer trash receiver except clean it up a little bit and it works. Yeah. The realistic is in pretty good shape. And yeah. it worked. Then a little, a little bit of fallout in the right channel every now and again, but I'll, I'll figure that out. But yeah, bang for your buck. I mean, yeah. Before shipping, I paid ninety dollars for that realistic, mm. ninety bucks. Yeah. What can you? What kind of AB amplifier can you get for ninety bucks? Yeah. Slim pickings, my friend. Well, it's yeah. getting slim pickings too in the uh, old vintage audio world as well. It's uh, <laughs> there's not as much out there. That's why I kind of went the realistic route because yeah. that's kind of the last pioneer, not pioneer, frontier. That's the and let me start that over. That's kind of the last frontier of vintage audio as far as being yeah. for like a hidden gem. Yeah, yeah. Well, they were you know low school. Yeah, when I was growing up, that's what I had. I had the yeah. low low school realistic yeah. receiver. That was my first receiver. That's awesome, man. Yeah, I've uh, I've had many experiences with those older receivers and amps, and I love them. I got to say, man, you know, I, the thing that we need to remember is like if we're talking about like seventies, I mean, that's like the golden age of hi fi. And yeah, I read uh, like seventy to eighty five. We're like. That's when receivers were receivers. Yeah. Yeah. They weren't, they weren't clowning around. So dude, that's awesome, man. I'm happy for you. Yeah. Well, there's going to be a total of four. Okay. I started off free with my trash receiver. Yeah. Okay. Pioneer. Very, very nice. Mm -hmm. And then I <laughs> ended up buying two realistics. Um, be, and it wasn't my fault, right? It was late at night. I put in two offers and they weren't like super low ball offers, but they were two offers that I honestly didn't think either one of them would take. Entertain. I thought they would. Yeah. I would think, thought they would. Okay. This guy is kind of serious. I'm going to counter offer. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Offer accepted. Done. Both. Done. And then I started going down the rabbit hole of actually, um, doing some research on these yeah and realistic had a top tier line and it's mm. the sta 2000 series so anything that's a 2000 was 85 to 100 watts and mm. back then that was monstrous power yeah it's like that kind of power is what it is exactly look at those veins yeah. bulging out of that bicep and tricep yeah. anyway is then that I what found this, this is called the bicep that's the bicep. Underneath okay. is a tricep. Down here? Yeah. Right here's I've been, the I've been, brachialis. I've been working on it. Yeah. yeah. I've been lifting up bookies yeah. over and over again. Some of those speakers are heavy. <laughs> Some of them have to, to be delivered like on, on a freight semi. Well, how about that? You know, Se wouldn't, wouldn't you know? Yeah, I, I just... I just I don't know how you would know that, but I just received some speakers through a freight company this morning. Can you share what kind they are, or is it too early? Maybe too early, but right. I'm going to do yeah. it anyways. I don't. I don't even. Oh, care. okay. You're I'm Ron crazy. I don't care. Yeah, Gershman Acoustics. Uh, they sent me over a pair of speakers to check out, so we'll see. We'll see how that goes. 
Yeah. Big fan of Gershwin. Gershman. Gershman. Okay. Yeah. Ofra. Ofra. She, nice yeah. lady. Sweetheart. She's a sweetheart. I've enjoyed every conversation that I've had with her. And uh, I'm looking forward to seeing what it's all about. And they, uh, they're headquartered out of Antarctica, right? Yes. Yeah. Or it's a lot Canada. Of audio, it's either that or audio Canada. Files. Either yeah. one. Neighbors. It's Antarctica. the same. It's the same. Yeah. yeah. Per capita, <laughs> a lot of audio files in Antarctica. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing ever changes on the Ron and Randy Audio Hour podcast here, folks. So if you're expecting us to get serious at some point, well, this keep is going to be... Hold you just on, keep, just hold, you, hold you just hold keep watching these episodes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We talk about a rough and tumble world of audio filing and yeah. Arctic frigid temperatures. Yeah. Well, what, what do you know people? Is there a city in Antarctica? No, I maybe city in Antarctica. Like, I don't know. Do people live there? I, I think let Josh, us know in the comments. I think Josh does. I think Valor is the last man standing in Antarctica with his shirt well, off. He walks around with his shirt off in Antarctica just to be cool. Well, I know he mountain biked from tip to tip. <laughs> he, he probably did. The big chain around his neck. Has yeah, I can't talk about his upcoming videos, but we've seen some snippets and they're it's I'm excited. His that, stuff is so cool. It's so cool. It is so much fun to watch. Well, both, well, all three of you, Doug at DMS, Josh at Joshua Valla, and Ron at the old NRD. I got a new record today, maybe. Um, all your stuff is so awesome, like from a cinematography or whatever you call it, recording standpoint. It's just you guys are really gifted. We're having some fun. We're just turning on these cameras, swinging them around like a bunch of monkeys and seeing what happens. That's what <laughs> I do. I just turn it on and start talking. Yeah. Well, dude, you're, you've come a long way, my friend. You know, from a production standpoint, you've come a long way. Your videos are looking great, man. Yeah. I, 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 well, thank you. But yeah, probably has a lot to do with uh, you. Yeah. You. Yeah. No, you, I think you've always had a good eye. I think you've always had you. You knew what to do. You just needed just a couple little pushes here and there, and you knew, you know what you're doing, man. Don't give yourself more credit. Your photography skills are fantastic. So, yeah. No, well, thank you. Yeah, it makes me feel good. Are we going to talk about anything today, or just keep probably patting not. each other on the back? I brought out the uh, Hegel H390, and I've had Ooh. it playing nonstop music for four days now, burning it in. I'm burning the sucker in, man. I'm just letting it go. And uh, I, I, I literally stole a bunch of power chords from Danny Ritchie, and I'm trying all of his power chords. So we're going to see. So we're, we, you just doubled down on controversy. <laughs> all right. First, you talk about electronic burn-in, and then yeah. you talk about power chords. Yeah. So yeah. Just drop, two gauntlets just drops. <laughs> drop. Come on. Yeah. Come yeah, at me, I, bro. Well, on my live stream, which you participated in, I talked about cable lifters, so I'm going to make some cable lifters as well. I'm just going to do the whole... Well, why? I mean, why not? Why I mean, not? Bend two pieces of cardboard into a triangle and then plop your cables on top. I probably won't do it that way, but Is that, something that not the correct way? I don't know. You're... Isn't cardboard similar to wood? Yeah. Paper, yeah. fibers? I don't well, know. Maybe there's some resonance... Com components that you need you need pressure pressure treated lumber <laughs> it's so ridiculous man to make your cable risers you know what would be cool is if you mm. like got a jigsaw out and then you cut them and it's at like nrd oh and then, yeah and then so like letters so like you yeah. used to do that in a kid as kids you know spray paint them so it just stuff. the cable nestles like in between yeah, the like in the or yeah. go through the r yeah, yeah right through the middle of the r yeah. yeah. Yeah, maybe. Food for maybe. thought. Yeah, maybe. I'm not telling you you have to do it, but I'm it'd be pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I'm having a whole lot of fun with it, man. I finished the M33 review, moved on to the next receiver. I want to pull in the Concept 300s and take a Ooh. look at those. And Q Acoustics. Q Acoustics. Beautiful speakers, man. I like what those guys do. Well, speaking of liking stuff, I like your... Your review, the uh, M33. M33. 
One ant like, to rule them all. Yeah. I like the Dirac. I wish they would bring that down to maybe a single end. I wish they'd bring mm. that technology down a couple of notches to single ended, maybe something a little bit lower power, maybe a little bit more. Well, mm-hmm. I'm just going to say, I wish it was cheaper. Yeah. More so affordable. whatever they need to do to bring that down, that would be very cool tech to have because you can start eliminating some of the room issues. Yeah. With that D rack software. Yeah. I want to jump in here and actually ask because I don't know. So all of our listeners, viewers, if you know of like other direct options out there that maybe we aren't aware of standalone units that maybe you can get, drop them in the comment section. Cause I'm kind of curious. I, I kind of feel the same way that you do. Randy is that it would be nice if we had more options that included Dirac and, you know, plug and play modules, things like that, that we can throw into our systems. And yeah, I don't know if standalone, I've never really gone down that rabbit hole. I know Emotiva had implements Dirac in a lot of its like mm-hmm. surround processors. Yeah. Um, I haven't seen anything in like a two channel. Yeah. Um, but I, I was looking, it's funny enough. I was looking at Emotiva's surround processor. And they have come out with a new one. But anyway, they're kind of getting rid of the old ones at a lower price. And while they're expensive, $1,200 for a processor and preamp, Mm -hmm. it's actually a pretty compelling argument when you start to look at, okay, you're getting a decent DAC, you're getting Dirac, Mm -hmm. you're getting a a direct and pure direct mode for two channel. Mm -hmm. And like it's at seven channels, even if, you don't use it all it's pretty compelling so yeah i wish they would come out with something like that for two channel yeah yeah it would be cool yeah i would love to see how you feel after using direct like setting it up and like what you notice and i could see you messing around with curves and doing different things it's it's a joy it's a lot of fun i You know, I even tested it in an interesting way, Randy. I turned up the subs volume all the way up to where I knew the bass was just baked beyond belief, right? I ran Dirac, smooths it all out. So it's like, even if you're not right with volume, let alone like your crossover points or whatever, it just, it's like, I know how to fix this. It's pretty cool. So you just hook up a mic and put it in the listening position? Yeah, with the M33, it comes with a mic. You put it in the listening position and then you put it, over to the left in the front, to the right in the front, okay. up high, and then behind yeah. you. Like, yeah. you're taking a number of different samples, and then yeah. it runs its algorithm, cleans it up. And one thing that I did early on, because I was like, what they say you end up with was difficult for me to believe. And since I have other measurement systems outside of what they're telling me, I remeasured, and it was exactly what they say it is. Like, straight line. I mean, it it was like, there's no way in the world you can get that linear of a response on your own. There's no way. It's not, we're talking in-room response that is as flat as a pancake. It was crazy. I remember you saying that and just being like, you were legitimately surprised. Oh. You were like, wow. I cannot see what I'm, I cannot believe what I'm seeing. I think yeah. that's what it was. Yeah. Yeah, I felt like it was marketing nonsense and jargon. It's like, I don't believe that that's how clean it actually gets, but it does. Now, I will say this, that, and I won't back down on this. I think after 500 hertz, even though it is linear, it doesn't sound as good to me. I feel like they are robbing some clarity, some of the spatial cues, things like that. So I really like using Dirac for down low and that's typically where you need it the most it's like we have base issues and problems it's like fix all that junk and then just leave the top end alone it's fine it's interesting that you say that because i have a a marantz receiver that has i think it's called odyssey yeah it's a room correction software and it's Mm -hmm. it's it's way more intense than the majority of the receivers i've had so it's again it's a six sample six position sample And so I did the whole thing and it was a surround system I have in my room. Mm -hmm. And then what I did is I just, I very similar experience to you at the time I had the clips RP 600 M's Mm -hmm. and it gives you a preset EQ curve. Now I don't Mm -hmm. think it's doing as much as the Dirac. I think it's just doing EQs and levels. 
and some time alignment. Mm-hmm. But when I turned it on, I was like, it sounds good, but I felt like it, to your point, robbed the clips of their essence. Yeah. And so what I did is I just bypassed the front two channels. There you go. And then I, I got that kind of the flavor of the clips back. Yeah. Um, That's cool. But it's very interesting. It's something that I, I would like to, I would go down. I want to go down that rabbit hole even more. And I've never really considered it for two channel listening, only for like yeah. home theater applications. Yeah, for you guys that are listening to us, have you messed around with it? What's your experience been? And also, um, we actually heard from Dirac themselves, and they want to set up a show where we're going to do a, you know, audio hour podcast with like the guy from Dirac. So we're gonna we're gonna actually talk to him. So if you guys have specific questions that you want us to ask him when that happens, it looks like it's going to be a couple of weeks out. Just let us know, and we'll we'll ask straight up like what's what's whatever you guys want us to ask so yeah i think uh digital digital manipulation of mm-hmm. all that stuff is is very cool it's kind of the future i think um, yeah you get on that processing going on and you can still maintain like you don't have to do it in the speaker let's do it in something that's got some processing power like a processor or yeah, a receiver sure. or, or amp or something sure i think it's really cool i think it's um the future yeah the future of hi-fi mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. i think i think it's going to be part of the future for sure yeah what do you think the other part is skynet skynet yeah mm-hmm. yeah i think we're thomas all, all... i think thomas from thomas and sarah is going to come up with something that is just going to change the world yeah that's what i think like a cool chocolate cake recipe audiophile conspiracies audiophile chocolate cake Maybe. <laughs> um, dude, I wanted to ask you something. Shoot. Do you, do you ever worry after you knock out reviews, whatever, do you ever worry like, was I wrong? Did I get that one? Every time. Every time. I mean, now, as I've gone down this journey, I have seen that the majority of the time my opinions match up with my listeners opinions for sure. Mm -hmm. And I don't generally watch other reviews or read other reviews prior to me doing the review. I just kind of like do my best and I put it out there and sometimes I'll go back and read other people's reviews. And most of the time they match up. Sometimes they don't. Every time I put something out there, I feel like, did I screw this up? Did I mess mm. this up? Am I totally wrong? And mm. I just think it, that's kind of part of my personality that yeah. I always want to do better. Yeah. So I short answer to your question. Yes. All the time. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten more confident um, sure. in some of them because I, I do like, I can pick out a speaker that's uh, fatiguing. I can pick out a DAC that's uh, a little bit too digital on top. Um, Yeah. I'm pretty confident with that stuff. There's other things that I'm just not that confident in. Yeah. Why do you ask? Yesterday I sat down and I listened to the H390 after a few days of burning it in and listening to the exact same playlist and content that I listened to with the NAD M33. And I kind of had a moment in there where I thought about the M33 review and being specific, talking about the mid-band performance, I realized it's not that I didn't get it wrong. I don't, I think I did fine, but I wish I would have said something in addition to the comments that I made, which is someone can say that the NAD M33 sounds digital Mm. and they would be right and it has to sound digital because it is any analog input that you plug into the m33 anything that you plug into the m33 is being routed through a analog to digital converter they are actually Mm -hmm. converting it it's a digital amplifier right yeah everything you hear is being rehashed from this engine that nad has built and they of course love it because i mean they have to, 
but I was sitting there listening to it and comparing it to just a true blue class AB amplifier, no digital stuff. And I realized in this mid band, it sounds so much more at ease and just like, oh, that's, that's nice. And I went back and I, I, I listened to my mid band assessment on the NADM 33 and it still holds up, but I wish I would have in addition say, let's talk about this perhaps sounding digital. What does that mean? Well, it means that perhaps it's going to be a little bit clinical, a little bit, you know, precise and detailed, but it might not give you the body. It might not give you that sink into your chair kind of a feeling that mm -hmm. some class A or class AB amplifiers are going to give you. And so then I would, I think I could have probably compared and contrasted a little bit better during that part, but I was well, thinking about that. I mean, that's, we kind of get a redo and, and we've done that a lot on our reviews where we kind of rehash them here yeah. and talk about, because I have that thought all the time. I, I will sometimes watch back a review and be like, mm, man, I missed that. I wish I would have said this, that, or the yeah. other. Yeah. But I mean, chances are everybody that watched the review is probably not going to watch this podcast, but some will. <laughs> so, will. yeah, I mean, it's kind of like, all right. You know what? These podcasts actually could be re really cool because it could le legitimately be a rehash of some of the reviews on what we missed. What yeah. do we miss? What is our has has our opinions changed? Yeah. Um. And what do we wish we could have said? Done. Yeah. Done. Boom. Yeah, I completely agree with you. And I and I think it also lends itself to just the fact that we're people, right? We make we make mistakes. We don't get it perfect every single time and even more like I feel sometimes after I'm done with the review, all the anxiety that I had, all the pressure, it's when that's gone, I feel a little bit more free just to have conversations like this. And it's like Oh, I wish I would have said this in the review, but I'm saying it now because I, f I don't feel any pressure anymore. It's like the review's over. It's done. You know, like, yeah. let's just talk, you know? So it's still, look, it's, it's an incredible machine. And the feature set is, I think, the number one reason why somebody is buying the NADM 33 is they want like a amplifier from the future. And that's what that feels like. It feels like this is an amp. I've, I've been doing Randy hands a lot. My, Wife always calls me out. She's she's like, he goes from the inside and then he does this, and I'm like, I I think it's Randy hands. I think it's Randy hands. Um, but anyways, you know what I'm saying. I'm not going to get long winded about it. I know exactly what you're saying. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, so. I think we, we our opinions are not the set you know chiseled in stone you no. know be all end all, and our reviews you know can be flawed. There's a lot of times I've messed things up. Yeah. yeah. I think I'm looking at the topping D90. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure I thought I returned that. Mm. And I'm looking at it right now. Maybe that's not. I don't know. Mm. I thought I returned that. <laughs> so it makes me wonder what you did, what you actually returned. <laughs> yeah, that would be funny. <laughs> Surprise! <laughs> Why is there an old cheese sandwich in this box from Randy? <laughs> that Randy, he's a funny guy. He'll get you. Classic Randy sending me moldy cheese sandwiches. Yeah. yeah. I did the Grado review today. Yeah, SR80Es. I got so excited. I haven't watched it, but I left a comment. I was like, when did you get Grado SR80Es? It's like, uh, look, I... The 99s, as everybody knows, it's like a conspiracy at this point. It's like Ron just trying to sell us a bunch of 99s. Yes, I am. Um, I won't put Amazon links below. I'm joking. But the SR80E has a special place in my heart as long-standing. It's like an old friend. Yeah. Just a great, fun, enjoyable headphone. Well, the review is wildly unpopular. <laughs> yeah, stupid headphones. Stupid headphones. I do like these though, and I'm wearing them right now. And I know you can't see it because it's a little bit dark yeah. in here, yeah. but I do like them. And one of the biggest reasons why I like them is because of how open they are. Mm -hmm. And I was, I had this thought. I love them for podcasts because I, I can't always get like the feedback right in my mm -hmm. ears, and so mm -hmm. I don't know like where my volume is on my voice mm -hmm. all the time. 
And I was in the uh, living room with the girls and they were messing around and I had these on and it was like, I could hear everything. And a lot of times when I'm in there with headphones on, they'll say something and I can't hear anything. I'm like, what? And yeah. Stop everything. Mm-hmm. But for this, I can still hear everything now. Have granted, a conversation. Yeah, exactly. Granted you're covering up the music, right? Yeah. Signal to noise ratio. That's the yeah. noise literally going on around me. Yeah. They're light. They're mm-hmm. comfortable. I didn't think mm-hmm. I'd like on ears. Um, Comfy. Yeah. Not built well, or what I would consider to be built well. Retro. Um, They're retro built. Well, I'm not even talking about how they look. I'm talking yeah. about like the materials used. Plasticky. For- yeah. Very. But you know what? They're made in the U.S. I had a really good uh, mm-hmm. experience with a warranty return. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> look kind of bad for Grado, but um i like them i like yeah. and i i go to grab them an awful lot yeah and i will say i mean i've had my pair for like five years now i really do feel like that is a headphone that it just it simmers for such a long time to where they just get better and better and better and it'll be at a point where like you will never want to replace them you'll be like i i just Hang in there, little guys. Don't fall apart on me. They just sound incredible. Yeah, well, for I me, they they opened up a lot from a bass perspective. Yeah. Because I didn't, I, I felt when I first got them, they didn't have any bass. Any bass. Um, Those drivers need to relax. Yeah. Right. Well, and whether it's actual mechanical break in or if it's my brain breaking in, regardless, they or got both. Yeah. a lot better as I listen to them. So yeah, cool. Big, big fan. They don't make Very them anymore. Cool. They're Very not cool. around anymore. They have the SR 80 X now. Have they discontinued the 80 E's? They're yeah. okay. Mm. 80 X's. 80 X. Yeah. I love these. I, I'd love to do a side by side at some point. Um, I see a turntable back there propped up high. Yeah. Yeah. Don't fall over. Come on. Oh, there. Lord. Oh, Lord. Yeah. It's a yeah. U-turn. Yeah. U-turn. You've been See, spending uh, time with that? Spinning, spinning some records? Yeah. So I actually, I showed it to you the other day. I don't know where I put it. I got a copy of Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Jimmy Page yeah. remaster. Yeah. And um, mm-hmm. interestingly enough, one of the few places that you can get actual affordable vinyl of all places is Walmart. There you go. 22 bucks that's not, and that's yeah thanks yes. randy you just blew it you just blew it i think that, walmart's inventory system can probably handle a few probably. audio nerds rushing into walmart <laughs> to get it uh i think they, i think they've got it down the aisles with their hawaiian shirts and like black sandals Friday, people yeah. knocking over each other to get a 50 dollars off a tv um, yeah it's mass hysteria vinyl <laughs> No, it's the audio nerds. It's the audio nerds. Man, that one's uh, <laughs> Pink Floyd. Uh. This ain't the right pressing. <laughs> Walmart pressing. Uh, um, I don't even know what I was saying. But. Yeah. Anyway. Oh, vinyl. Yes. Yeah. Um, I have. I've been loving it. I've been trying to peel that onion back because... Mm-hmm. I don't know what I'm listening to when I listen to a turntable because there, mm. there are so many different parts, right? Yeah. You have the cartridge and the then you have the tone arm and then you have the plinth and then you have the phono stage. Um, yeah. So right now I have three turntables in the U-turn. I have the Andover spin deck. Mm-hmm. Awesome. Yeah. Which is made by Project. Project. I don't mm-hmm. know why I get Riga and Project mixed up. It's okay. And, and then I also have the Fluence RT83, which is my personal table. All I just which- realized we haven't talked since you released your. So did you do the spin bass and spin debt? Like the little. The whole thing. Yep. I already did that whole thing. So I have no idea what you said in the review. We haven't talked about it. I will tell you, I loved that thing. I was like, this is so cool. Like I, didn't I know could you reviewed to- it. 
I reviewed it. Yeah, I loved it. I was I was pleasantly surprised how good that thing actually sounds. I was honestly thinking this is going to be the most gimmicky, quick return. Sorry, Sue, I love you to death, but no, this thing's going back. And you know what? I was wrong. I was like, this actually is really cool. That was yeah. my exact experience. I'm yeah. listening to it. And I had it in a corner initially. Number one, I was like, whoa, this thing puts up whoa, some bass. Yeah. And so, and then two, I was like, there's stereo separation here. There is. Number three, I'm like, these highs are pretty good. And I don't hear any like forward, like uncomfortable forward top end mid range. Yeah. Um, it was a breeze to set up. I had all, Easy. I had four boxes unopened boxes and i literally i did it on purpose i looked at my watch mm -hmm. and then i opened mm -hmm. and within 67 minutes and i'm talking about i put together the stand yeah within 67 minutes i had music playing out of it awesome it's and, so cool well and it's something that i think will get used mm -hmm. and my point in the review was okay what's the best camera is it your cinema camera that mm. takes five to ten minutes to set up and get all the or is it your cell phone camera it's this camera because you use it the most exactly yeah. and that was my point i'm like what is the best hi-fi system probably the one that you enjoy and you use the most yeah so yeah i uh, absolutely loved it yeah i totally i'm totally with you why are you oh i showed you you're muted oh you muted yourself because i coughed yeah okay i got nervous um yeah well that's cool man that's awesome so very impressed and you can put whatever table you you want to on it yeah i will tell you i like where you're you know i completely agree with you when i did the review of the harmony turntable i kind of had the same conundrum it's literally the first turntable review that i've done in eons many many years right and i was like how do you review a turntable like how do you walk people through how does this turntable sound? It's kind of a dumb question to begin with because there's so many variables in play. It's almost like you just have to explain like what the experience of using the turntable is like, and you need to talk about what the entire experience was like, and that's the review. Because saying how the turntable sounds, well, what cart did you use? What phono did you use? What amplifier did you use? What speakers, like, all of that is part of the the experience of it yeah i am 100 percent back all in to physical media yeah and i still almost all of my listening is still done through digital yeah but i am so excited to be back to physical media to be able to touch it and i mean i've got stuff laying right here you know yeah yeah cds i bought some records this week um yeah i'm gonna yeah. be doing a video uh probably today to maybe release tomorrow or sunday about some things that include that and you on your live stream and it was brock that actually asked the question about mm. hey is our is cd our cds good enough and yeah. your, your comment was not only are they good enough they're better yeah and uh than high res or or whatever mm-hmm and I think while the convenience factor of digital has flipped the music world upside down and brought in, I mean, face it, if you're 20 or younger, or probably even 25 or younger, you've probably never gone to, to buy physical media. Right. Unless it's a novelty for you. Right. And I just, I just love it. I love everything about opening up the CD or the record putting it on there, pressing the close and having the thing go in there, pressing play. And it brings me back to, I am not listening to music a la carte anymore, or I have this song and then this song and then this song. I'm listening to a record now or a CD. Now I'm mm -hmm. listening to what that artist created mm -hmm. in totality. Mm-hmm. And I've really been, it's, it's taken my music enjoyment to kind of a, a the next level. I've yeah. really enjoyed it. Dude, that's awesome, man. Yeah. U2 War. I got the U2 War remaster. So cool. Oh. Yeah. That's awesome. Very good. Yeah. 
Very good. Sunday Bloody yeah, Sunday. Great. One of the best songs ever. Ever. Yeah. Yep. That percussion, that guitar riff at the beginning. Oh, so good. Yeah, so good. What else do you have to say? Dude, that was beautiful, man. I, I'm just, that was, I, I, I could say the exact same thing you just said in a different way all over again, but you, you hit the nail on the head and, um, I completely agree with you. That's I get beautiful. A excited. Yeah. I, I love music, man. I love yeah. it. You know, it reminds me of this time a long, it was a good while back. I used my favorite spot in Mesa was half price books. And oh, yeah, that's where I got those. Mm hmm. It was my favorite spot. I think I think it was just just one second. Yeah, I took a whole. I, I literally took one of those uh, plastic containers. You know, you can put the lids on, stack them up. I took a bucket of books into there. I'm like, here you go. And they're like, uh, Randy, your offer is ready. And I go back there, and they're like, uh, yeah. And I felt like I was on Pawn Pawn Star, whatever that. Mm. That thing. Like, These are pretty crusty, you know. I mean, like, yeah, but... we can give you four dollars and ten cents. And I'm telling you, that thing weighed like 35, 40 pounds when I'm walking in there. And I literally, I literally laughed out loud and I was like, All right, give okay. me four dollars and ten cents. That pays for that pays for one of my CDs I'm getting. <laughs> I was like, I I there it was a loud, like I was amused <laughs> at uh like like, because I'm like four dollars and ten cents, and the ten cents was very important, right? <laughs> yeah, so that means right. that one of those, some of those books were either a nickel that they're giving me. They want because, to make sure you got your money's worth, buddy. You know, I mean, you know, <laughs> <laughs> that I, extra dime was going to come in handy at some point. <laughs> I had my wallet out. I'm looking. I'm looking down at it. They say four dollars and ten cents. I start laughing. And I just go, all right. Like all I right. didn't care. Okay. Whatever. Okay. Got me down. So anyway, Mesa, Arizona, half price books. I remember being in there a long time ago and I was looking through some records and there were some younger kids, two, two kids, two dudes that came in and I, maybe I'm just getting old and crappy. I was like, these punk kids, what are they doing in here? Get out and of my CD collection. <laughs> I was, I was looking at records, right? I'm flipping through. And I see him come over and they start grabbing him and, oh, have you heard this? And he did it. What surprised me about these two punk kids is they were in the jazz section. And I was like, All right. I, am, am I on TV? Like what? Seriously? That's strange. Like that's hey, odd. They, they can go ahead and pick that section over. I don't care. <laughs> You're uh, like, I don't give a rip. Yeah. Give me a, a copy of Cinderella night songs and I'm happy. And, dude, what was funny about it is... <laughs> <laughs> they're they're in the brand new section and these records are like 20 to 25 bucks a pop right they've brand gone new. up they've from gone there up, too right? man oh i'm sure 30 bucks if not higher and as i'm i'm on the opposite side so i can kind of see over and see what they're doing and as they're pulling out these records i'm just glancing and i'm seeing what they're getting and i noticed a trend that the most the vast majority of the records they were getting were from a particular label i don't remember the label's name but they're notorious for being awful more often than not they're always digital cuts they're always crappy pressings they're always terrible and i was like okay all right i'm, 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 gonna, I'm gonna go talk to them i'm just i'm i'm gonna i want to i want to talk to these guys and see if i can help them out you know so i walked over there i was like hey i don't want to be weird or anything but can i just talk to you for a minute about those records and they're like, yeah, what's up, dude? And start talking, end up being just the sweetest two kids in the world. And they're like, yeah, my dad is really into jazz and we're actually buying a bunch of jazz records for him. And these are like the ones that we're supposed to get. And I was like, don't get these pressings. I was like, get, c come over here to the used section with me. And we start flipping through original pressings, older pressings, stuff that I knew would be good from analog. And they were just over the moon. They were so happy. They were just like, dude, that was so rad that you should, like, we had no idea and we didn't know what to get. We just wanted to get this for pops, you know? And I was like, pull out a card. You're welcome. Ron from new record day, Ron from new record day, um, at your service. No, but to your point, 
the physical media this is this is something that i wish would happen more is you're now talking to somebody about music you're actually you're you're helping them like you're you would have never like, met those guys if you weren't looking at physical media just stream it just stream it it'll sound great it's high res it'll sound awesome You'll you would never it. even have given them that yeah. that suggestion just stream no. it yeah because you wouldn't have been there wouldn't have been there so it's just a great way to you know remember that this is our community and you know i mean i don't know how you feel about it but i it's like it drives me crazy anytime i hear a live stream or any review that is like bashing the community because it's like it's our community it's ours let's take care of it let's build it up let's help it yeah, out we're, you know we're not the majority here yeah we are we the are. community all of us collectively you know yeah yeah what is your opinion you think cds are going to make a resurgence or you think they're uh, just going to go away um i don't know if they're going to make a resurgence but i don't think they will totally go away i think it'll be similar to as what we experienced with vinyl where even through the dark age of vinyl in the 90s like where we felt like it's over like the show's over, right? I think that what we'll see is it will dwindle, it'll become smaller. But I think that because of our community and people that miss physical media, I think they'll they'll keep it alive. Well, I found it interesting. I did a little research <clears throat> research into this and I was looking at how much physical media was bought like last year or the year before. Anyway, whatever year they had statistics for. And and I'm not getting the, I'm not going to get the numbers right, but I think I'm going to get the percentages close. Out of all the physical media sold, and I would have thought it would have been the opposite. I thought the majority of it would have been vinyl, but it's actually mm -hmm. the opposite. The majority of all the physical media sold was CDs. Wow! And by not an insignificant percentage, I think it by was something like seventy thirty. Wow! Like seventy percent of the physical media sold was actually CDs. sold on CDs, yeah. and yeah. Um, I thought that was cool. But what blew me away about half price books was the cassette prices. Metallica, Ride the Lightning, $50 for a cassette that I probably threw out three copies of those over my lifetime. Threw That's away. insane. It's insane. Cassettes, man. I couldn't believe it. Yeah, I actually found a lot of those cassettes in some guy's garbage a long time ago, and then I sold them. I got a lot of money for him. So <laughs> like GI Joe guys and star Wars guys. No, I was just kidding. Um, yeah. Who thinks I, about cassettes, man. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's funny. I, I actually went back to listen to some cassettes not too long ago, maybe within the last year. And I was like, man, these things sound like dirt. They're, they did not sound good to me. I was like, from what what, what perspective? Like the dynamic range, the highs, the lows, details. I think everything. I, I was like, this, there's maybe maybe, but here's the deal: is like these are old cassettes that I've had for eons, right? So it's very possible that that physical media it gives up the ghost at some point. Like if they were fresh and mint, who knows? The experience might be different. But I didn't think um, they sounded. I was entertaining the idea of like, do I? I know what I need. Honey, Sarah, we need to get a cassette player. I need a cassette player in, in the in the old rig. So, but I determined it's not worth the fight. So. Well, I've got actually got a cassette deck on its way. A That's cool. Nagatomi, Nagatachi. Brock That's is sending cool. it to me. That's and cool. uh, I have a new cassette, September 10th, the remastered Metallica Black. That's the only yeah. reason why I... That's the only reason I have a cassette player coming... Yeah, it's for the cassette that I don't own. There you yet. go. There you go. Well, dude, it, it, you know, and for me, it won't change any of the memories that I've had of like, dude, we played the cassette of Nirvana Unplugged to the point where that sucker, it was spinning off the reels, man. We played that a lot in the old Nissan Sentra, oh, flipping yeah. it over. Dude, it was uh, it was awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. Oh, cassettes. I remember having a portable cd player that i hooked up to my car stereo with a cassette adapter <laughs> you remember yeah. those it yeah. had the cord coming out on one side and, mm -hmm. shunk, and then yeah i had a portable cd player that i had to put on my leg 
because if not, the vibrations, it would just skip all the time. And then hey. I'd turn a corner, the CD player would fall off my lap, and I'm cords everywhere. I felt like Chevy Chase trying to put skis into the back of the car, you know, picking it up. And that is awesome. Dude, oh, that's yeah. That's awesome. Good times. That was, it was great times, man. Guess hmm. that's getting back to the beginning. I think that's what yeah. this is about, man. Yeah. All right, man. Is that it? I think I we're 45 minutes in. Usually when we start running out of things to chat about. So I could go on and on. I can't stop talking. Randy, what do you say? Randy can't stop talking about it. That was your joke, and then I stole it because it's so damn funny. You use that joke. Oh, on that me was along. the air fryers. It was about You're the like, air fryers. Ron won't shut up about it. You know, I was like, the way you said it in your dumb face, I was like, I'm My stolen. Dumb. I was like, it's so funny. And so I did it in the live stream. I was like, Randy won't shut up about it. You he know? won't shut up about he it. He just yeah. won't stop talking about it. Yeah. <laughs> I remember that. that was the Josh Fowler between two speakers. Yeah. yeah. Ron yeah. won't shut up about it. And then Josh, <laughs> Josh said, uh, he said, uh, <clears throat> I go pressure cookers. And and, and uh, I, I think I asked him what PSI it was. And he was like, I'm not sure about that. I go. Pounds force per square inch. Yeah. It, it, because he was saying, I don't know about what the PSI is. Not, I don't know what PSI stands, stands for. for. And I slayed him with that. Yeah. <laughs> he just, I had to actually cut it because he just, <laughs> I got him so good on the pounds force square inch. And, then, and I did it my yeah. dumb between two speakers. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Who's the genius YouTuber now, Josh Valor? I got to bring wow. that back. I, I need to do another one. I know. Somebody. I know I miss him, man. A lot of editing. Yeah. <laughs> Except for the, yours. Yours is the only one I didn't have to edit. Oh, uh, comedy gold. All right, Good man. You want to take us home? You want to take us home on this one? Yeah, I don't know. Hey, we're on a whole bunch of podcast platforms. They'll be linked in the description and Ron's in Ron's description because I don't know how to do it anymore. Um, we're, we're on Apple podcasts. Google, I don't even know if that's a thing. Spotify, all the good stuff. Hank's Hank's podcast barn. Mm -mm. We're not allowed to mention Hank's ever again. Oh, okay, that's right. Non disclosure. Um, the the settlement. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sorry about that. Um, maybe we'll link some stuff we talked about in the description, but yeah. maybe not. I don't know. Thanks for watching. If you watched it, if you're to this point. You must be one big fan of I got a new record today. The old R&R. And, &R. and the cheap audio mans. All right. Guys, yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. I'll talk to you later, bro. Good day. Good, Good day, day to, to you. you, sir. <laughs> All right, guys. Bye. See ya.